great thing about a football team is there's a spot for everyone. It doesn't matter your size, your skill level, your speed. Every position has a different set of skills. It's not just a commitment to the sport, it's a commitment to yourself. It's really like badass. <laughs> I feel like football is definitely not easy, especially for girls. And I feel like girls who play tackle football or just football in general, I feel like they have like a sense of like courage and strength. Like, you know, like it's not easy at all playing football, especially like tackling football. So most of the girls, they've either only just started playing, only have two years under their belt, and a lot of them are very young, 15, 14. You can tell that they're paying attention, you can tell that they want to do things right, and you can see that they don't want to make a mistake. We mean business. We know we belong here. We have an opportunity to keep building off of this. Being with like Team Indigenous, it just like feels like very homey. You know, I would not feel like that with any other team. I feel like mainly because we all come from like different places, but like deep down we know like what we all go through in those reserves and all of that stuff. So I feel like I feel like it makes you feel more together. Like you know, if we look at uh, history and especially now with what we're learning is that the Indian residential school system and, and all the policies and the legislation that were put in place against First Nation and Indigenous people in this country clearly had a devastating effect. Everybody asks, why football? I think football has been probably one of the greatest sports that has broken down social barriers, um, racial barriers. Having a program like Tackle Football, um, it's like the time commitment, the mental focus, um, making sure you're going to school, because if you're not going to school, you can't be on the team. It's not just a commitment to the sport, it's a commitment to yourself. We have girls, for example, from Saigon First Nation, who would travel an hour and a half every day to go to practice in Winnipeg and then they would travel all the way back home an hour and a half. They'd be getting home 11 o'clock, 11.30 every night and then have to do homework, have to get ready for school the next day. You know what, they do that three times a week to go to football practice. Not even a lot of reserves like have sports, you know, and travel lots or even have the money to travel. You have kids who live in cities, who live on reserve, who are in foster care, you know, so I really feel like it's more so like a parent being more so like I want my child to experience normalcy. For a lot of families, it's normal to eat three meals a day. It's normal for them to just go grab a cup of water from the tap. Like, you know, a lot of communities, you have to ration your water, right? Just having an opportunity to like live normal for a little bit. I remember last year, I had this young girl come from one of our First Nations, and all the girls had their own beds, own dorms, right? And I remember one of our young athletes telling us that that was the first time that she got to sleep on a bed in four or five years because of the overcrowding back home that she had to sleep on the couch or on the floor every night. all quickly become familiarized with themselves because they understand where everyone is coming from and they all know 
what it's like to be an indigenous female, some coming from good homes, some coming from not so great homes, but like they're all there for the same reason and everyone is there to support each other. It kind of like builds that sense of pride. I think there was a sisterhood, like we were all like really close, everyone knew each other, we were all like joking around with each other, so that was nice to see, it was nice to be a part of. On the field, like, it was so fun. We're all, like, working together as a team. Like, if someone, like, missed a play or whatever, they're like, oh, we got it next time, you know? We got it next play. We all lift each other up. Every season when things start, girls right away, oh, I want to hit, I want to get into the hitting. It makes you feel really, like, beast mode, like, you know? Just, like, hitting people in the field, making them, like, drop. <laughs> yeah. I like how physical it is. Cause like there's not a lot of sports where you can just like push someone and like this is one of the sports where you can do that. For girls especially too. But there's a process to get there. Like let's start with that fundamentals and we'll move you up into how to hit somebody safely. We had like, there were some days where we were doing like two a days and that was like before the game. It was like a week away from the game and we were doing like two practices a day for like two hours. And it was like, it was intense, especially like in the heat too. The whole week, it was crazy. I was sore, like every single day. I was like working so hard. Like it was intense, but it was really fun too. Learning new things from different coaches. Those coaches came from like different places, so you know, it's cool to see what they know. Because last year, like, there was not like we barely had enough girls to even make a team. Last year, um, our team, a lot of the girls, first time playing, um, we went to that tournament with 22 girls. We ended the tournament with 14. We didn't win any games or nothing, but it's okay because I just love playing football. I don't really care about like winning or not, you know, but it's nice to win sometimes. The goal for our team this year was to get a touchdown, even a first down, a couple of first downs. When it comes to game day, these girls will show out. Like, you might not see it in practice, but when it comes to game day, there's something that switches with them. And I think a lot of it has to come with putting on that jersey and then realizing, oh, this is who I'm representing. Like, representing Indigenous youth, Indigenous females, and my community in Canada as a whole. So when that representation comes into mind, and then it's like, okay, I gotta show out. Coming out of like those locker rooms for, for the first time was like something I, I never experienced before because like with the music we had in the background it just it was like so much different and with the crowd too it was just like something cool to experience. Smudging like gives me like a sense of like identity, you know what I mean? It gives me like a sense of pride. Hey, remember this is our medicine, all right? Sport is our medicine. So this is an honor to be out here, play, represent, okay? Be out there thinking about the people who did it before us, the people who have to sit there and give their lives so we can come out here and play this medicine game, all right? Lots of people, lots of people, lots of women out there still missing. Remember, hey, when it gets tough, when it gets tough, think about those women that we don't have right now, okay? Think about those women. We're playing for them. Yeah. We're representing them. The Kali Nan, Kisamantu, the Chiwa Nan, the Nanoi, Anushka Kisiga, Nianan, the Wasimisaka. Some girls, like, they moved away from their reserve and lived in towns and stuff, but they didn't really know much about their, you know, culture. And it's not really, like, um, around them. So I feel like smudging and stuff, I feel like it makes them feel like more like, like a sense of belonging. Today is more than 
just a game. Today we stand strong as indigenous women, carrying the pride and strength of our ancestors. Every tackle, every run, every play we make is a tribute to those who came before us and a promise to those who will come after. You are all here because you are powerful, you are capable, and you belong on that field. Remember, football is about more than just physical strength. It's about your heart, your determination, and working hard together as a family. When you step onto that field, remember the journey that brought you here. Think of the communities, your families and friends who believe in you, and the hard work that you've put in. Play with passion, play with honor, and play for each other. No matter what happens out there, we are winners because we play with heart and pride. Let's show everyone what it means to be a warrior on and off the field. Are you ready? Yeah! All right, are you ready? Yeah! Where do we go? Where do we belong? Right here, right now! Three, two, one, I us as a team taking a knee during every national anthem and each game that we took a knee was for a different i guess call out to action um one being the missing and murdered indigenous girls uh two clean drinking water and our first nations communities and three for all of the children who never made it home um, evidently, the last residential school that closed was in 1996, I believe, and it was in Saskatchewan, and that was the last team we played against. Not all schools have been, like, searched for, you know, children who have gone home. Not all 635 communities have clean drinking water, and there's still, like, thousands of missing and murdered Indigenous women out there that haven't been found, like, even my own auntie, so... It's like, you know, in those moments, taking those knees has been, um, I guess, prideful in a sense. And also the tournament for allowing us as a team to do that. It's a step forward in bringing up conversation and bringing up um, understanding of what First Nations um, communities face on a day-to-day -day basis. First game, stepping onto the field, I had a really mixed emotions. Like I was happy, excited, and like I feel like deep down I had like a, I knew that I was representing our ancestors and all that, and the girls that who were missing and murdered and like you know didn't have this opportunity to play football or you know do stuff like that. And I, I cried the first game because I was just like it wasn't even because I was like like scared to play. I was just so sad and like. I don't know, I just felt like a sense of pride stepping onto the field. And I feel like I was just ready to kick some butt and show people, you know, um, how strong we got within, like, you know, last year. What are we strong? What are we capable? Where do we belong? Right here, right now. This time, we would like to welcome the home team, the National Indigenous Women's Football Team. There you go, fake his quarterback to show up. And there's the top of the touchdown national. What a great design. Gorgeous, gorgeous play. First time in history. God, it feels so awesome. Like we're just all representing our like reserves and stuff, and like our ancestors, and 
you know, everyone back home, and it just feels so awesome. Like, I feel like it's just like a one in a lifetime experience, you know? Like, there's no ceiling above us that we can't break through. We are Aboriginal people. We come from the stars so we can reach out to the universe and really work together and make the highest possible outcome in being a champion. And I do believe that these girls have that in them. I know there's a lot more girls out there that want to be a part of that, you know, we can get there. We just need you girls to come out and help us get there.